Welcome back to Admin Essential for Beginner series. Today we're going to cover custom and standard objects. As you can see in my background, I have Excel open because I wanted to compare and contrast objects with Excel sheet and how you can relate to what you already know and understand Salesforce better. So I have an Excel file here and let's imagine that you are a company and you are going to track all your customer information in an Excel sheet. How would you go about that? You'd probably create an Excel that will be called, um, let's say customer, right? And you would say, you know, um, I would just work with companies and then I work with people within those companies. Let's just take that example. So I will say, you know what? I need to capture company name because that's the name of the company. I want to know who they are. That's your one column. Then you may want to capture their address so that you can deliver your services to them. It can be any company. Um, and then maybe you want to capture what is the revenue so you know if they are uh, going to be able to pay you or not. How many employees do they have? How big is the companies? And there are other information that you may want to capture as a business. So all these things, imagine these things are different columns and we will see how it compares with Salesforce fields. Um, so these are different columns. Now you want to start capturing the data. So I'm going to say ABC Inc, um, Acme Inc whatever company you are working with right and you start tracking those addresses revenues and all these things and the more rows you add every row is basically a record and customer is your table you may add multiple so like let's say you also want to capture people in those uh, company in that case you'll add another tab or maybe you'll create another sheet altogether and you'll say i want to capture their first name i need their last name I need um, their email address so I can contact them, phone, and so on. And I also need to know which company they work for, right? So now we are seeing to start to relate this information with the company. So maybe I have a John Doe who works for Acme Inc. That is in the first tab, right? We have Acme Inc. Then maybe there's another person. And we can have multiple, so like multiple people could be working on Acme Inc. And you may have multiple rows for that. And you have multiple rows for Jane Doe. Okay. All right. Enough of Excel. Now let's jump into Salesforce and see what this is all about. So when you sign up for an org and you log in, you will be brought to this page. This is pure vanilla Salesforce. No customizations done so far. So you will see all of these different tabs. You can click around opportunities, leads, and all of these things that you're seeing are its own object. And when I say object, think of again that Excel table. Each tab here is its, a, its own table. So accounts is a table, contacts is a table, campaigns is a table, all these are different objects, okay? And Salesforce comes with pre-populated objects. So if you sign up for an org, you will have data populated so you can play around with this. So if I just go to contacts and this is like called list view. So all of these things are called list views which means basically you can see all your contacts at one place like that. Um, so all of these, I did not create them. When you sign up for an org, it will already come with this. That's the front end of it. This is what your users will see without any customization. Of course, you can customize this. You can make it look slightly bit different, but the idea is this is what the end user will see. But as an admin, you have extra power. So you can see behind the scenes what's going on, right? In order to do that, you have to go through this setup. So here's the setup. When you click on this, you will see there are options. So you just can just go to setup, this first option there, click on that, and it will bring you to this backend page. And ideally, end users should not have access to this. So they cannot customize front end looks like because that will impact all the users, right? So here you can see object manager and home. So let's take a quick test drive for object manager. And what does it mean? Object manager, as the name sounds, it's basically where you can manage your objects, right? So you can see there's account, and it's the same account that we saw here. Just a slight difference that it's called accounts, and it's called account. And I'll talk about what's the difference. Uh, and if you click on this, right, you will see there is API name. So API name is really important because everything in the backend perspective is using API name. There is a label. Label means what the front end people see. So when you create an account, you will see that label. Plural label are accounts. And this is what you see in the tabs. These things are called tabs, each of these. And there are more tabs. If you click on this little icon, right, 
you will get to see a lot of different tabs. If I just say view all, this, the front portion, these are apps. So basically, think of it this way. All of these tabs can be combined to make apps. So these things are app and the single things are tabs. Okay. So if I just search for accounts here, I will see that here, accounts. You can find contacts. So everything you see in tabs is the plural form. And every one of those single consolidated thing is called app. So in this case, I'm at a sales app. And then if I go to service app, I will see different set of tabs. I can also see same accounts and contacts, but now I see cases as well. So you can customize on what app you want to show up here. And in future videos, we'll also see how you can create your own app. Maybe you don't need sales and service. You need something else. You can create your own app and you can add your own tabs to those apps. Let's not get ahead of ourselves and let's come back to focus on this object. Again, so standard objects, Salesforce comes with it and you can build your own custom object based on your requirements. Now let's look at what these fields are. So fields are basically similar to columns in your Excel sheet. As you're looking there, we have company name. That's the name. You can also have number. Um, owner is a different relationship type field which we'll cover in future videos but most common data types are text pick list so you just can select from options um, currency if you're trying to track some amount values um, address is, is specific very unique to salesforce um, and much more so there are a lot of different field types you can get that from here if you go new and you can create your own custom field so maybe your your org is tracking let's say tax number uh, for for an account or a company in order to do that you'll have to first identify with your business what is the type of field they're looking for right you can say it's a text because it can be number and, and text combination right if you do hit next you'll be brought to this screen and this screen will look different based on the field type you selected so if you selected a pick list this list would look different this page will look different uh, and then you can just say tax id is what i want here you can give it a length of your choice add a description very important to add description and make it required or not um, i caution using this because then that means anytime you're trying to save the record it has to be there if it's not there you'll get error so pay extra caution to that um, report type basically adding this means that you are allowing people to run reports on this so that again is another requirement whether you want this or not and that's pretty much it the one thing to note here is there is underscore C at the end. That means it's a custom field. When you hit next, you'll be brought to this page. And for now, just understand that this is a way to control who sees that field. Maybe you added a field that's very um, secret and private. You don't want everybody to see that field. Then you can just uncheck it. Who should see it? Uncheck everything, uncheck this, and then just maybe only those profiles should see it. But we will cover this in much more detail later on. For now, I'm just going to make everybody see this field hit next and now it will ask me okay do you want it on the layout now that seeing and this is different we will again cover layouts in more detail but just know that this is a way for me to place that field on the page so if i go back to the accounts here and i'm just going to go to an account all accounts let's go here burlington textiles so if i go to details i am seeing all these different fields the way this is coming up here is by adding them to the layout. So for now, I'm just going to add it to all the layouts and hit save. So I just created a custom field called tax ID. And you may need to refresh the screen, but now I can see that tax ID appear here. What if the standard objects that Salesforce came with did not meet your requirement? You wanted to track something else completely different. For that, you have to create your own custom object. And I would highly recommend at this point, follow along with me if you can, if you have a developer org. Because it's much more easier to understand if you're following along. And I promise it's not going to be overwhelming. We're going to keep it really, really simple. Okay, so let's imagine this scenario. You are working at a company and you had to go out to a client site on company's money. And then you have to submit an expense. So you are going to create expense report and then add a bunch of expenses to it so you can get reimbursed for it. Okay, that's the scenario. So... We want to just track the expenses that you made on that particular trip so you can get paid for it. Now, that is something that standard objects do not cover. It's very specific to your company. So you're going to create a 
custom object. And if you're feeling overwhelmed getting right in, you can always take that Excel approach, right? Go to Excel and create a tab called, uh, let's say, expense report. You can do that here. And basically, that will help you understand what we're trying to do. So your expense report would look like maybe your San Francisco trip or Boston trip. And that will be your report. And what are the attributes you want to add to that? You can then add columns. Okay, what do I want to track? And again, these are the things you don't have to come up by yourself. These are the things that your business will ask for it. And then you just need to be able to create it is at the beginning. And sometimes you can also recommend things. But for now, let's just create expense tracker. So I'm going to hit create and custom object and going to say expense report. I'm just going to call it that. And the plural for that, and we know what plural means. It means it will be showing up in that tabs reports. And this will be the API name, track, employee, expenses, and data type. So you can either have an auto number or a text. Auto number means you don't have to enter the name by itself. Text means you have to enter your own name. For this one, let's keep it text. Um, and you can also add allow reports, meaning people can run reports on this. And don't worry about all of these other checkboxes. Leave them as is. And you can also add notes and attachments to the page layout. I'll show what that means. And we need a custom tab. So if you don't click on this, you cannot find them when you try to search for that tab here. Okay, so you need a tab to be able to search for it and actually create the records. I'm going to hit save. And then it's going to take me and ask me, what should be the icon? How do you want to call the expense report? So just pick a, you know, icon that makes sense. Or maybe just a pencil because that makes sense for expense report. And hit next. And here again, this is another visibility. So you may not want to show that tab to everyone so you can hide it. Uh, I'm going to say that for now, apply default on to everyone. So everybody sees this tab. Hit next. And what is this asking for? This is asking for which app do you want to add these tabs to? Because we, we already saw sales app had different tabs than service app. Service app had cases, sales did not have cases. So you can also control that while creating a tab. For now, I'm just going to include it to all the apps. Hit save. Okay, so now we got expense report, okay? And all it has is just one field called name. These are, so last modified by ID and created by ID are basically who created the records. So if you go and create the expense report, it will be your name on it. And same with last modified. Name, we just saw that it's a text. And maybe we want to add something else as well. Maybe we want to add month, right? We want to add a month. So let's say it's a date field. I just want to capture the date of expense. So I can say date there. And you will see the next page will be different because I just created a date. Expense date. And add a reasonable description so you can come back to it and understand what you actually meant. And hit next. Like everything to visible for now and again it already creates layout so the moment you create a custom object salesforce by default will create a layout for you you don't have to create that and then we're just going to add this new field to that layout now let's go back to our main screen from the end user perspective and see what it looks like i'm going to just do a refresh so all the changes came through and go to this app launcher this is called app launcher Right now, we don't have anything because when you create a custom object, it doesn't have anything. It's just like creating an empty Excel sheet. Now we're going to hit new and you're expecting to see exactly two fields because the other fields modified by and created by our system created, you cannot change that. So I'm just going to say Boston trip, for example, that's my report name and expense date. I'm just going to give it today's date and hit save. And that should bring you back to the page. And I did not create this layout. Salesforce creates that by default. And you can customize it later. 
and that's my expense and I can change it from here I can edit it again if I wanted to make it different date and that's all for the custom object so we created custom object we also added one field to the custom object okay now if you wanted to add more fields to this object you could definitely do that I highly encourage you to do that go to fields and just create different types of fields see what it looks like maybe you want a pick list field right so if you wanted a pick list field hit next you will see the options are different here then you will understand what is global value set we will look into that later but for now you can add values here so you can say red orange like those are different pick list values so because it's a pick list it looks different so go ahead and try out different types of fields just to get a feel for it and be more comfortable creating fields and you may run into questions like what is lookup relationship what is master detail don't worry about the relationships yet just focus on the fields that you can create and see what they look like. So just to summarize, we looked into how we can relate Excel to different objects in Salesforce, what are standard and custom objects, how we can create your own custom object and custom fields, different types of custom fields. We also learned uh, app is a collection of tabs and how do you create a tab as you're creating a custom object, how you add them to the layout and profile and much more. We also looked at how to use object manager and how to search for your object, right? In the next video, we will pay more attention to the standard object and the use cases for each object. I'm going to cover like some of the main standard objects that you need to understand so you can help the business build the custom objects only for when it is needed. Thank you so much for watching. See you next time.